You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey you guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you man Twitter the gaming drag today. I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Tennessee Shuichi's Path. So y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you were up and let's go. Alright. Let's do this thing. Alright. After going back and forth on a deuce four times, I finally managed to push my way through and smash the ball down into his court when a very brief misstep on his part caused him to miss his contact point with the ball and resulted in him hitting the ball slow and high into my court. Game, Michimaya, 1-0. Alright, that gives me a little bit more room to work with. I take a few deep breaths, already noticing how the air seems to get stuck in my throat. Is this seriously the very first game of the match? I better hope that I manage to push my advantage further, otherwise this might get bad. Sometime later. Despite my best attempts, however, the pace of the match isn't slow at all. Even while I'm trying my best to keep Tanabe down, our very next rally is back to being suffoc suffocatingly long. As I run around after the ball, hit after hit, the desperate, ga the desperate gasp for breath feels as if I'm being slowly choked out. Every breath I take makes my throat and lungs burn. Game. Game in first set won by Michimaya, 6-4. I finally managed to drive the ball past him and win the point, but Tanabe fought me every step of the way. Although I'm able to stay generally ahead of him for the first time in years, each and every point feels like it's its own final battle. I close my eyes and try to take a deep breath before heading for my bed. What? As soon as, the air starts, as soon as the air starts to enter my lungs, I start coughing violently. All of a sudden, it's like my entire body is screaming at me. I become, I become acutely aware of my own heart rate that is suddenly pounding so hard in my chest that it feels like it might explode. My throat feels raw as if it were on fire, making me cough again every time I try to breathe and put myself together. Crap, 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 this is really bad. I've been so focused on the game and my own performance that I didn't notice any of the warning signs my body was trying to give me. In fact, I've been ignoring all of them intent on pushing myself to my limits so I can finish this game off as soon as possible. Instead, I've gone so far past my limits that I can't even keep myself on, on my feet, falling to my knees on the ground and clutching myself while I cough. Yuichi? Yuichi, are you okay? Michimaya-kun, can you stand? Do you need to call for medical assistance? Because of my blurry vision, I don't even notice Tanabe rushing to me until he's already crouching by my side and trying to get me to lean on him. I try to respond, but the struggle to catch my breath makes it incredibly difficult. Not only that, I'm beginning to feel cramps all over my body. I, I need... Here, have some of my water. You're completely soaked from top to bottom. You must be dehydrated right now. Before he's even done talking, I find myself grabbing his bottle and desperately downing it, nearly choking as it goes down my throat, giving me the sensation of swallowing hundreds of needles. I'm so close to puking right now, it's not funny. However, it helps, it helps to quiet down the coughing, giving me a chance to finally catch my breath. Fuck! My whole body just pushed down hard on the brakes. I went from feeling so well to barely being able to stay conscious. What the hell am I supposed to do like this? What are you feeling? Can you stand? Here, let us help you to the bench. The Empire has already come down from his chair, trying to help me get back on my feet along with Tanabe and dragging me to the bench. I flopped down onto the cool wooden bench, feeling my entire body give way and finally getting the chance to rest. We'll have someone examine you soon. They're on their way right now. Yuichi, your heart is beating alarmingly fast. How could you push yourself this far? We might, have to we might have to have you retire from the match, considering your condition. No! I try to protest as weakly as I can, coughing coughing a bit as the words catch on my throat. You'll be examined, but if the doctor decides there are no condition to continue, you'll be retired from the match. I'm fine, I just didn't realize how much I was straining myself. I just need to take it easy for a bit and not push myself as much for the rest of the game. I don't like this either, Yuichi, but your heart is racing so hard that I can feel it by simply carrying you. And you looked as if you were about to vomit then and there. I'll be fine. You can barely stand. Get off my case, Tanabe. This has nothing to do with you. Nothing to do with... I see. Very well. I shall return to my own bench. You do what you think is best for you and your body. God fucking damn it. Why now? I know I'm not used to playing this hard anymore, but why couldn't I at least keep up for a little bit longer? If I could manage this for one more set, I could have an actual decent chance of winning. Fuck, 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 fuck. Instead, I am forced to sit and have a wet towel draped over my forehead and around my neck while a doctor comes over to check on me. He asks me several questions while also checking my heart rate, measuring my blood pressure, and making me drink lots of fluids, among other things. I give him short answers, insistently trying to convince him to let me get back to the game while the man frowns and ignores it. The whole process is a lot longer and more frustrating than I would like. Just the evaluation itself feels as if it's taking forever. Let me play. Right now. The only thing I need is to be able to play. Hmm. You were lucky. You seem to have been dehydrated, but it didn't go so far as to develop into, the, into heat exhaustion. 
That plus the excessive... That plus the excessive fatigue could account for the symptoms you displayed. I can allow you to continue playing, but I would still strongly urge you to retire... Retire from the match. One second, y'all. Water time. Mm. Alrighty. It's fine. I just have to avoid pushing myself too hard, right? Besides, this is the finals. Retiring like this, especially when I'm winning, would be pathetic. Are you sure? Yes, I'm feeling much better already. Very well, but if you start feeling dizzy, nauseous, or lightheaded again, you will be made to retire. Y yeah. You don't have to tell me twice. I know how this works. Still, at least I get to I get to continue playing. The crowd had been muttering and talking to one another quite loudly, to the point I had a hard time tuning them out to up until now, but their voices only seemed to increase in volume now that I've been given the all clear to keep playing. We shall now resume play. Tanabi and I both head to our respective positions on the court, with him being due to serve first during the second set. First thing I notice once I get back to my feet and start moving is just how heavy my body feels. It's like my limbs are made of lead. My breathing is normal now, and my heart has settled down a fair deal. My vision is no longer dark and blurry, and my head feels fine, but... This is going to be a huge problem. How am I going to move properly like this? No, no, focus, Yuichi. Even if I can push myself quite, even if I can push myself quite as much, even if I can't push myself quite as much, I still need to get back into the proper headspace. Can I go? Oh, y yeah, please do. Crap, I'm focusing so hard on how I'm feeling and trying to get back in gr my groove that I'm not actually paying proper attention to what's going on. Once I give the all clear, Tanabi hits a flat serve to the edge of the court making me dash to reach the ball. Immediately, I can notice my reaction time being slower than before, as well as my overall speed. When I do reach the ball and hit it back, I can't impart as much power as I would like to the ball, which instead flies on a shallow arc towards Tanabe's court, far from the very edge like I was aiming for. 15-0. The red panda hits the ball back at the open side of my court, scoring the point as I try, to, as I try my hardest to reach it. <laughs> Damn! This is bad. My body really isn't cooperating at all. I used up all my stamina and then some during my match with Kaken in the first set. Not only am I not able to maintain the same pace as before, but I can't even get into, my, into the pace I'm used to. Tanabe stares at me for a while, watching me as I head back behind the baseline and take position, ultimately sighing and moving himself so, so play can restart. What? Are you going to act like you're disappointed now? Screw you. Don't, you! don't you look down on me just because I'm struggling a little. Like with the last point, I struggle to find a decent, sustainable rhythm, struggling to keep up, a, keep up as my heavy body refuses to move like I want it to. Through sheer grit, I manage to extend the rally a fair bit more before, more than before, but even that isn't enough to keep me in the game. Now that he's able to fully operate like he wants to without me being able to rely on my height and reflexes to keep up, Tanabe's shot variety and accuracy are soon able to overwhelm me. I can either anticipate his shots or react fast enough to reach them early enough to put myself in a good position. As a result, I'm struggling to even do anything in this game. Try as I might to reverse the situation, the rest of the sets continues to, in a similar fashion, with Tanabe's variety of attacks, refined tactics, and brutally efficient style giving me no inch or quarter. Game, Tanabe, 5-1. Fuck! This can't be. This is by far the worst I've, the worst set I've seen again the worst set I've ever had against Tanabe before. To barely even be able to win a single game by the skin of my teeth, with my performance continuing to drop as the match continues, my exhausted body simply refuses to keep up with the excessive strain I've placed on it. Oh, my throat. It's like, no, water time. Hmm. Okay. All my attempts to counterattack are swiftly shut down, until eventually I lose all hope of recovery. Even my mind, the only thing that had remained sharp, is eventually overrun by panic and doubt. That is when I well and truly lose. Sometime later... Game set and won by Tanabe. Count, 4-6, 6-1, 6-0. Even the umpire's announcement for the match barely sounds like anything more than noise to me. Without acknowledging it in any way, I merely drag my feet toward my bench, beginning to put my things away and covering my head with a towel. I know it's rude to walk out without talking to your opponent and congratulating them, but I fear I don't have the capacity for it right now. I faintly hear my name being called by one of the officials, but that doesn't stop me from pulling my bags over my shoulder and making my way to the exit. I am, however, stopped before I can take more than a few steps, my wrist being grabbed as I'm spun around from behind. I met with the sight of, a sm of the smaller red panda looking up at me with a complicated expression. Tanabe's eyes scan my face, and I can almost see his brain trying to work out something to say. However, I quickly pull my hand away from him, and not having the energy to wait, uh, to wait a long time for words that might not even come out. Congratulations. I manage to squeak the word out as I try, as I try once again to make my way to the outside. Yuichi, wait, seriously, are you well? I'm fine, Takagi. 
I just leave me alone. I don't even notice until his name leaves my lips that we've somehow started calling each other by our first names to the honorifics again. For some reason, that realization bugs me far more than it should. Are you sure? I can help you. You have to participate in the award ceremony. So do you. Shrug. I really am in no condition to stand in front of a bunch of people right now talking about how grateful I am only to be presented with a runner-up trophy. It's not like any of it matters anyway. Anything other than winning the trophy is just noise. It doesn't matter. I just need to lie down. Doesn't that mean you aren't well after a... Leave it, Tanabe. I speak out, cutting him off, almost pleading. Please, let me leave. Stop making it a problem. I can't deal with this right now. My whole body hurts. My legs are starting to cramp already, and I can barely stay on my feet. It becomes more than obvious that I push myself way too far. I desperately need to rest right now. Understood. Having seemingly finally gotten the message, Tanabe bids me farewell. Turning around and heading back into court where, where tournament officials are already organizing the podium and trophy. From the corner of my eye, I can see journalists rushing to the rushing to the exit and attempt to intercept me. After all, the runner-up leaving without a word and refusing to participate in the award ceremony would likely make for far interesting would likely make for interesting gossip to some particular brand of vultures. Thankfully, I can also see Shuichi, Keiken, and the others hanging out by the entrance, ready to make space for me and shield me from the crowd. I walk out of the court, completely tuning out the questions from reporters and bystanders alike as my friends huddle around me to keep me safe. I notice that Saya-chan isn't here yet. It's possible that I got my ass kicked by Tanabe so fast that she hasn't even finished her match yet. Heh, <sighs> isn't that just pathetic? While I'm being escorted out, Coach rushes towards us, asking Shuichi and the others to see me to the hotel while he sticks around to deal with the media and to congratulate Saya once her match, which seems to be nearing its end, is finally over. Beaten, exhausted, and humiliated, I somehow managed to make my way to the sidewalk in front of the building despite my slow steps. All the while, Shuichi had rushed ahead to get the car and drive around to pick us up. Once inside, I leaned back, closing my eyes and letting the, in letting the entire rest of the world fade away, including the, including the attempts by my friends to talk and check in on me. A few hours later. Before I've noticed that hours have passed... At some point, I became dimly aware that my bags had been packed for me and left waiting for us to check out. In the meantime, the first thing I did notice when we, the first thing I did once we got back to the hotel was head into the bath and stay soaking in the hot water for a long, long time, feeling far too tired and sore to do much more than that. I think Shuichi tried to say something about joining me to help me out, but since he wasn't a guest at the hotel, he wouldn't be allowed in the bath in the first place. It's like, y'all, water time. Alright, last four minutes. <clears throat> Let's make it count, y'all. <clears throat> I will admit that his sulking was one of the few things capable of making me smile through the exhaustion and frustration. <coughs> Once Saya Chan and Coach came back from the venue, a few words were exchanged between us as the rabbit restrained her glee over winning for my sake. Instead, after we'd all begun the process of getting organized and loading into the bus, the last thing I remember was Shuichi saying something about waiting for me at school before seeing Saya, Keiken, and I off. The moment I got out on my seat, the fatigue finally caught up to me, and I promptly dozed off for the entirety of the trip, only waking up when Saya Chan gingerly shook me awake, much more, uh, much more gently than I than I would usually expect to expect of her. I might add, and I asked him asked me if I needed any help getting off the bus. Finally, why does it feel like this trip gets worse every time? It certainly is bittersweet. Hmm? No, that's not what I was talking about. I meant that it's uncomfortable. I suppose I can sympathize. I'm used to traveling in much more comfortable vehicles. Shocking. All right, you three. Get your bags out of the bus quickly so the poor driver can head home already. Yes, sir. And you, Ichikun. If you need anything the next few days, please come talk to me. What is there to talk about? Hmm, I suppose it would be difficult to... Yeah, regardless. I have a few adjustments to your training regimen on Monday. Make sure you show up prepared for it. Seriously? That's it? Aren't you being a little insensitive here? Crocodile smile, seemingly amused by me snapping at him. Would you prefer I continue trying to get you to talk? I figured you would rather face face forward and focus on what you can do to avoid something like this happening again, no? Ah! I don't want to agree out of principle, but he's not ex exactly wrong. Either way, I trust that you all that you all either arrange for transport home or are fine to go on your own. If you'll excuse me, I have to check if nothing was forgotten in the bus and start locking things up. Yes, sir. I'll see you all Monday. Sai and Keiken both nod meekly, bidding farewell to the crocodile as he disappears back into the bus to talk to the driver and do whatever it is he still needs to get done. As for our part, we do as we've been told and grab all of our bags once again. It still is a little disconcerting to see the absurd amount of crap Keiken brought with him, 
There's so much that I don't know how he can even carry it. Are you going to be okay with all that? Hmm? Oh, yes. I have a car waiting for me outside. I told Alex to wait out there with it since I didn't want to deal with the embarrassment of being waited on hand and foot while still on school grounds. I don't think it makes a difference whether it does, whether it, he does it now or later. What a weird hill to die on. Uh, by the way, Shochan is waiting for us at the gate. We probably shouldn't keep him waiting. He is? I hadn't noticed. I was wondering where he was. I thought he'd gotten stuck in traffic somewhere or something and wasn't here yet. God, my whole body still feels so heavy. The nap helped a little, but everything still hurts. I really need to get home soon. Hey there, you okay? Yes, we're great. Thank you so much for asking. Saiyan intercepts the question that was clearly aimed at me, making Shuichi sputter in response. I, uh... <laughs> kidding. I need to get home anyway. So I'll leave you and Yuichi come to it. Come on, Kei-chan. But we're not even leaving together or anything. Saiyan turns to me, quickly wrapping her arms around my neck in an awkward hug. Please don't beat yourself up too much, okay? You did a great job, you know. I'll try. Seemingly satisfied with my listless answer, Saiyan pulls away. Nodding and saying a quick farewell to Suichi that he responds in kind while Keikun does the same. The two bunnies quickly make their way outside, almost as if they were jogging faster than usual to try and get away from us. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. And also let me know when uh, all when uh, uh, some of our past VNs that I've covered get updates so I can jump right back into them again, you know, like Fatal Force and uh, Psychic connections. Anyway, y'all, I love you all. I'll see y'all next time. Bye-bye!